you're jogging with two people. That's our, yes. our binary yeah. jazz. Um, it is the light of your life. And I have an emergency water situation to attend to. We're so glad you joined us. We are here as always. Uh, this is a podcast about uh, nothing. Can you still hear, me? still hear me? Yeah. Yep. Microphone's traveling with me. Great. Uh, this is a podcast about, um, you know, whatever happens to pop up. Alex on the topic. Chris and I are trying to figure out what that topic actually means. Uh, fill in a cup with water. I feel like I need to explain that off camera, that sound. Um, and, uh, and then we go for 40 minutes until Zoom says, I've had enough of you. Or until you, the listener says, I've had enough of you. Or we've had enough of each other. I don't know. We're here. That was rockier than I expected. I don't even by my I've standards. Ever, I don't think any of us have ever signed off in anger. Like, no, oh, but there's this a topic. Always a first. Always a first. Um, it's held today. No. <laughs> on the internet, binaryjazz.us. Uh, from there, you can link to things like Twitter and iTunes and uh, Amazon FBA or what? No. Tumblr. Anyway, or I'm whatever. Allison. Nope. That's Gary and that's Chris. MySpace. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> Names. Yes. Uh, we're, we're, we exist where, where podcasts exist is, is the deal. Wherever you find your fine podcasts, there we are. Yeah, there we go. In the organic podcast aisle. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's probably got to be a tagline somewhere, but organically made sounds like it could. Organically made podcast. Do you, do you both own um, Instapots? No. We did. Yeah. And we got rid of it because we didn't use it really. Uh, we have a we have a um, a pressure cooker, and we have uh, like a rice cooker, and we have a crock pot. So we have all the things that the Instapot can do, and we didn't find that the, that the things that an Instapot like could do that was special and unique to an Instapot was anything that we couldn't do outside of that with the things that we have. I've found that my meat eating friends love the Instapot more than my vegetarian and vegan friends. That okay. seems to be the thing. Yeah. I haven't cooked meat in it. Uh, actually, um, we've used it as a crock pot a dozen times and never used it for the pressure cooking portion until this past Sunday when I'm like, I found a recipe for making mashed potatoes in an Instant Pot. What could go wrong? Um, <laughs> that's a whole other episode. Actually, not, not much went wrong. Uh, Have you made, did you ever make grits or no? Not yet. Not yet. No. no. No, I like the idea, but you know, do you I, have a, do I you have a crock pot. Oh yes, I think so we have, have an three. So you've been using it, the Instapot as a crock pot, but you also have a crock pot. Yeah, I think we have three. I think at some point we've had four crock pot devices on the counter. Yes, yeah, yeah. Rhonda is big on crock pot stuff. So, well, bear in mind that we are a house divided. So often when we're having meals, there is a crock pot for a meated option or a meatless option. So. That happens sometimes, not often, but sometimes. It's nice to have the two crackpots for that. I love that. Um, we are a house divided. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, yeah, so in the case where all four were active, I, I feel like vegetarian options took, vegetarian, non vegetarian took up two, and then I'm not sure what the other two were. I don't recall, but um, I'm sure there's a picture of it somewhere too. All of them, like with the one little red light, except for the Instant Pot, which is like, mission control you know crock pots are great it's like here's a knob your options are no warm low or high that's it like it's it's a great user interface like even i can't screw that up yeah my mom oh. our our family crock pot maybe is over 40 years old <laughs> like it's oh. always been the same crock pot <laughs> oh dang so um years ago uh right before christmas um, our crock, our primary crock pot, like developed a crack in the pot. And so like, well, like this is like literally how we eat. So, um, we, uh, I, I went to go get a crock pot. I think I went to Walmart. It was like for Target. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, but Ron is like, just to be clear, this doesn't count as a Christmas or birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> A good clarification. This is a necessary household replacement. Necessary household replacement. Yes, it was. What's we were your, able to so get what? a new uh, our handle on our our crockpot lid broke, and we were able to just get that on Amazon. I'm sure. I'm positive that that you could probably find the 
the pot uh, for your crock pot, unless it was like, think... unless it was like built into the the thing. Because our crock no, pot, it wasn't. Our crock but it was cheaper fairly... to just get a whole new thing than yeah. to just get the pot on Am- the only place I found was Amazon, and so like Target, the entire setup was less than the pot itself on Amazon. That's fair. What's your oldest kitchen appliance? Is it the crock pot? No, you probably have- a waffle have- iron we got. Yeah. From when we got married, maybe. So ours is my blender. Is that is that inherited or passed down or no, no, it's a Vitamix. Or just, it's okay. probably 15 years old now. Hmm. It has some issue it has some issues. Um, but it also just needs a replacement part that I've been hemming and hawing about getting because I'm like don't want to ship to this address and blah, blah, blah. Um, um, I I actually say that, I wonder if we have something of my mother-in-law's in a cabinet here. We may have some old appliance like that has like that like 70s like yellow hmm. earth tone color. My mother-in-law tried to give us a, a deep fryer and we turned it down because we were like, I don't think we need to be frying things a lot. <laughs> Like just generally, yeah. I was like, this seems, and also I was like, it's, it was like much older. And I was like, I bet they have better ones that are like, if we mm. did want one, something that's more safe than one that was from like the eighties. <laughs> we don't really have any old uh, kitchen appliances. Um, we just- It's probably well, wise. <laughs> we never inherited anything. Uh, mostly because oh. like Aaron's parents don't use all their stuff. and. I mean, her, her grandparents, well, her, uh, yeah, passed a while, her grandmother passed a long time ago. Her other grandparents were way up in Idaho, uh, and they just passed a few years ago, and I think other, the other siblings got all their stuff, um, and her grandfather was in a um, retirement community, so he didn't have, I mean, we got some stuff from, from him when he, when he went, but we didn't get, like, appliances because he didn't have any appliances. So, I feel like um, grandparents were pretty light on the appliances anyway, at least yeah. in my family. Like, oh, I got, that's maybe, if that counts as an appliance, I got a rolling pin from my grandma. Like yeah. one of those vintage glass ones that are hollow Ooh. and really like keep the dough cool. Oh, wow. That's so, cool. We, we, um, hmm? we have like a 40 year either. old <laughs> like shaped cake pan, like a sun or something. Like oh. old Wilton cake pans. I, we have more than one, but that's the one I remember is the sun one. And then there's some that are much newer, like Snoopy. Um, but there's some very old ones that have been, I guess, in the family for some time. Our, our blender that's... is a Blendtec that we actually got a couple of years. We actually got that, a, a new one, uh, like two years ago when um, uh, Aaron's dad's cancer diagnosis came in and we weren't sure. And he was going through chemo the first time and he wasn't able to eat like solid foods and we're like okay you can have our blender we will get another one like if Mm. this helps you survive and eat food and and deal with things you can have this it is very easy you push the button yeah it does all the work yep i thought of another light you'll have to save it for another day gary are you sure yeah this one might be worth it my motion my motion demands that you stay still (laughs) Okay, that's fair. Because this this is kind of a haul. I have to go out the door and then down the hill. But there's these two like old lights mounted to a pole that have like a lily pad like light shade around them. External lights. They're beautiful. The audience hasn't seen the walking tour of Gary's sh- uh, uh, hanging lights uh, that <laughs> happened before we were <laughs> what we need? recording. I'm gonna take a bunch of photos of me like selfies, like pointing like at a light, <laughs> like we can post on the web. And I, I mean, we may make in that face every time too, like. Yep, <laughs> trying to get trying to get the light in the yeah yep I'll do that I'll do that I, I have to do it both lights on and off because the effect is different oh but I should replace the bulb in the chandelier above me before I do that because that'd be an nah, embarrassing picture with a know. bulb out yes that because that would be embarrassing <laughs> that's <laughs> that would be the line like clearly for me that's the line we can't cross a light bulb out in a chandelier everything else is fair game but the light bulb in the chandelier um, so usually how I, this works is uh, Allison brings a topic. Did we say this already? And then Gary and I try to get. Uh, I tried to say it, but yeah, probably failed pretty miserably. Yeah, drop the um, ball. Cool. 
uh we don't know what it is and we try to um, figure out what it is uh usually we don't know what it is in multiple contexts uh including like <laughs> we don't know what it is before the show but we also just don't know what it is period and we like make shit up that's how this that's how the show works but then most of the time we don't actually even talk about that yeah the topic the is heterochromia heterochromia that's two different colored eyes <sighs> Gary, <laughs> I was I was like only sixty percent certain that was right, but I figured <laughs> if I went in confidently, like Chris would be on board, and uh, I don't know why I know that. I actually I think I do know why I know that. I had a friend Paul when I was in uh, middle school, and he had heterochromia, and uh, I don't I mean I just certainly remember the word, but you said it, and I'm like I've heard that somewhere, and it made me think of Paul. So. What's so funny is that, so I ran this by my partner and I was like, hey, is this a thing that like people know or is it just like <laughs> something from yeah. like my, my own archives? And he was just like, well, he's just like, I, he's like, I don't know if most people know what it is, but he's like, but you know what? Gary's going to have a friend that had it and he'll guess. <laughs> I was just <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I was like, oh. well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind that's of creepy something how it was called. Like no, that. I don't think it's creepy. I think it just means Gary's had a lot of life experience with people with two colored eyes. Like, I don't know why that would be the. No, I think that when you look at me, you're like, oh, that's a guy that knows someone with heterochromia. I give off that vibe and I you give it. off it's the fine. vibe of someone who knows someone who is. <laughs> uh... And it's not to be confused with Anisa Coria, which is when pupils are different sizes like David Bowie. But his oh. eyes are also, were also different colored, right? I don't believe so. Don't believe Is that so he could see the world through Bowie color? But I'm not no, sure. No, the, the issue was that he um, he injured his eye as a, as a kid. And mm -hmm. um, the eye different thing was, was a result of, of like injury and surgery. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, well, that, that, that spoils my uh, guess, uh, which was going to be Chromeo, the band related, because yeah. <laughs> uh, Chromio is a band, uh, yeah. and they're very obviously heterosexual. So heterochromia is just the genre that Chromio, uh, <laughs> of the genre of music that Chromio performs. <laughs> Anything to bring it back to genre nader? Yeah, yeah. Heterochromia. We should actually put Chromia is there in there, and hetero as a, as a prefix. That'd be. <laughs> You're totally right. I will be looking for the pull request. <laughs> not that i'll do anything i'll just be looking for it i'll glance at it when there it goes through and be like oh i'm glad he merged that that's awesome yep, yep. uh we are currently at episode one 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 just wanted to Ooh. point that out because of the ones did we i i know at some point we realized that we were missing some episodes or oh, we yeah. skipped or something did we oh, chase yeah. that down or no or did we give up on absolutely not down? no that's not happening we, okay <laughs> that's fine <laughs> um I, you know the thing I, uh, is the thing is that 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 uh apple uh a podcast app whatever yep. i guess it's called podcasts because that's dumb um uh actually counts the number of episodes anyway so probably podcasts knows how many we've done and and what the actual episode is and so it's just our arbitrary oh and you're saying we could then work the delta from there well we could, or we could just trust that that the podcast apps know what episode it really is, and that our episode numbers that we put before things is just an arbitrary uh, naming system. I'm willing to be honest here and say that I doubt anyone cares what the binary representation is of the episode. So, <laughs> uh, I think that's probably fair. Uh, if you care, I mean, I it. think I think it was please, probably please a thing. write us a spam message. <laughs> I think it was probably a, a thing worth counting for like the first five. But beyond that, nobody can count in binary. Yeah. Maybe we should revert back. Maybe this no. is a whole new season. No. <laughs> uh, I, I remember at some point, Chris said something about getting season number X, like completing season number X. And I'm like, wait, we have seasons? We do seasons. So Yeah, we do. Yeah. We, 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 with the end of the season is basically Christmas break. Right before Christmas break is the, is the last. Because we usually take season. a couple weeks off. Yeah, yeah. We take a couple um, weeks off and we come back uh, in January sometime. And that's the beginning of the next season. So I have a couple of topics I want to talk about in addition to heterochromia. Um, first is- uh, How, Why would you ever want to talk about anything other than chromio? <laughs> well, okay, actually now I have three. The, the, <laughs> the third one first, because you know the order in my head, so it matters. 
Um, is there actually any anything physiologically aside from the different colors that that uh, heterochromia that like does that differentiation in color is that an outward manifestation of something else happening or is it just like a, yeah you've got a mole on your cheek whatever like there's no there's no it doesn't matter I don't believe so I think it's usually just genetic um, it doesn't indicate that something else is going on um, okay yeah like webbed feet or something no they're not connected okay. as far as I know <laughs> okay I'm, I'm a man of science, but I'm not a doctor. So I just don't. <laughs> well, so similar to you, I had a friend in university named Jenny who had two different colored eyes. And as far as I, and I was constantly quizzing her about it. <laughs> Which I'm sure she That's loved. Great. Yeah, sure, sure, probably. Loved yeah, definitely. I don't actually know that I knew that Paul had different color eyes until he said something about it because that's how observant I am. Of course, I was young at the time. I'm now old at the time. I'm still not very observant. <laughs> Uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk about um, was going back to the idea of a break. So we take breaks from the show from time to time, mm -hmm. but like, I always feel like break when I take a break from work is like, there's an actual, like, I'm taking a break because I need to actually like recharge. Whereas I feel like breaks here are, are a bit more utilitarian in the sense of like, I'm just actually not available during recording because it doesn't actually feel like I need to recharge from this. So that wasn't a question. It turns out it was just a thought. Um, mm -hmm. I can counter that with when we go on break, when someone can't make it, I yes. actually do take a break because I don't have to come up with a topic for the week. That's, <laughs> so oh, that's fair. Actually yeah. A vacation. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you have at this point, like total, um, like hundred percent permission anytime, like five minutes before the show to be like, oh, by the way, not doing a topic this week, you two figure it out. And that would be totally legit. Although Maybe Chris should take that next time because the last time I did it, it was it was not very great. I do try to keep that to a minimum because I think it's kind of nice for me to have to show up to something. Um, hmm. But oh no, you still have to show up. You just don't have to bring the top. No, I know, but like I need clear. to show up, show up fully, like with my responsibilities in tow. I guess. Got it. As opposed to how Chris. I'm making it sound Actually, like I Chris just shows like up and hits the record button. I'm literally the one that just shows up with the inability to like intro uh, and occasionally I know the topic. And that's, that's like, what would you say it is you do here? I hit the record button. I yeah. do the post and yeah. I, I, I post it on to the internets and like do I know. a very small amount of editing. As far I as know. we know. <laughs> um, so like my answer to like, what would you say it is you do here? Like, I, I don't know. Like I've got a server that this thing sits on. That's it. I, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep, that's what I do here. Yep. Occasionally when deploys break, which is like every deploy. It's like every time we that. try to deploy. Yeah. <laughs> like, why does this thing never work? Like I test it and it works. And then we try running it again, like arbitrary months later. And it's like, <laughs> no, all right, whatever. Which doesn't make sense because uh, I don't want to dig too much into the boring tech stuff. The third thing, which was actually the second thing I thought of, but it has become the third after the first two, which were also out of order. Uh, what have you all experienced any gas shortages can i tell you about gas shortages around here no uh i saw a long line and that this might not even be uncharacteristic but we went to costco uh yesterday yeah. and there was a long line in the costco gas line but there's always a long line in the costco gas line so i'm not sure if that was uncharacteristic at all um literally that, 25 stations around me completely out of gas and have been since i guess tuesday night or wednesday yeah. Like no, nothing available. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Which is, it, it's, it's just, it's so, it's like, like in Florida, like we're coming up, it's June 1st is two weeks from now ish. Uh, and that is when June 1st is traditionally in Florida when the hurricane holidays start, which means you go to the grocery store June 1st and all the water has been purchased because people are like, Oh, it's hurricane season again. I should start prepping. Uh, and then what happens is you hold that water until the first hurricane morning and then you buy more water. And you do that throughout the season until the end of the season. You're like, well, good. Now I have all the water I need until next June. And that's that's sort of the the process. And we celebrate by getting drinking really water drunk. No, by getting really drunk when the hurricane comes. Because we don't want to waste our water. So you drink beer. What? Just in case you'll need. Oh, yes. Hurricane parties are enormous. So like you're off work. It's like terrible outside. But the wind is blowing. It's raining sideways. You're like, well, this sucks. I'm going to drink boxed wine and bad beer and whatever other alcohol I have in the house for you know days on end because I might need that water if we lose power for an extended period of time 
I don't know. I, what? I'm not trying to explain the logic. I'm just telling you how it works. So that's the level of gas purchase. Oh, that's the other thing happens is like, if there's a hurricane coming, like suddenly everyone's like, oh, I need gas. Like, why? You're not why? leaving you're the not house. You're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to, you're about to batten on the hatches for like, you know, a week. Um, so that's what it is here, except that there's like no rhyme or reason, just that, oh, we're out of gas. So we got like 40 miles of gas in the van and like 20 in the other car. I'm like, well, it'll come back eventually, whatever. We're going to go much of anywhere. Probably fine. Is it because um, prices are changing or something? Like, what's, No, it's because of the, the ransomware uh, attack on whatever energy company in the East Coast. The, let's, let's, let's get the whole story out. The Koch brothers owned a uh, fuel line on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Ransomware because there was like literally no security policy in place. So uh, yeah, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's just a dumb I, thing. It's just, I, it's just I a saw... continuation of this like end times play we're in yeah. right now. Like dystopia? I, yeah, no gas. I saw, um, I saw an article about that because I was trying to figure out, because yeah, no, it hasn't affected me at all. And I, I barely knew anything about it. So I decided that I should, you know, read something about it. So I found an article about it uh, recently um, that um, I thought was uh, entertaining and uh, I don't know, maybe somewhat refreshing that the hackers who built the ransomware were like, yeah, we don't really care about uh, environmental issues or uh, about any sort of message or any like government or, or whatever. Like we're not working for any, we just want money. We just want to get rich. That's it. And I thought like, okay, I mean, cool. That's some refreshing honesty, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, cool. All right. You, you do you dude, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to try that, but it's, I'm going to target something like really like mundane and they're going to be like, eh, you can have Live it. without it. We'll just build a new system. It's fine. Be like, it, okay, sure, man. Enjoy. <laughs> It'll be like, I'll find someone's like old blog and like pick up their password and be like, I've taken over your blog. And they'll be like, eh, I don't update that anyway. It's fine. Whatever. I'll just grab a. I'll grab an archive from the RSS feed. You can have the rest of it. I better go archive. I better go password my blog. <laughs> I um. Have, how often do you find yourselves using the Internet Archive? Only when I'm trying to find my old websites. Yeah, I the other day maybe we had this conversation. That's why this like ended up as like a brain worm for me. I um. I went to a site that I. Well, I don't own the domain now, so I don't know why I went to the site because I knew it wasn't going to work. Um, but. I, uh, I went to the Internet Archive to look up some old, uh, I had a site called Haiku Fish. Uh, so went and like looked up old haikus. And, uh, and as a result, it was like, oh, I haven't talked to that person in years. And reached out via email to someone and was like, hey, we haven't talked in a long time. How the heck are you? That's it. It wasn't a great story. <laughs> I, I Internet remember, Archive. I remember Haiku Fish being a uh, topic that was discussed at some point on this podcast in the past. Eh, I, uh, I would love a, um, a social group of people that post haikus on the regular, but I don't want to do it on a platform like, well, on a platform, like I want to do it somewhere where the data is not owned by Facebook or Amazon or Google or Apple. Yeah, not a, not a, uh, a apparently I want us to handwrite haikus and, uh, deliver them by a carrier pigeon. Yeah. It sounds like you want haiku pen pals. Yeah, there we go. I feel like that would be disappointing because then when you got a crappy one, you'd be like, wait, I waited all the time for this and that's what you came up with? Yeah. Like at least you, on the internet, the excuse is like, oh, I thought of a haiku and it's really dumb so, and I posted so it and it went through no editor. But if it has to come via like pen pal, like by, by a mail or something, like you could have taken an extra day and really refined this thing and made it something special, but you still have asked it. No, so here's what you do. Uh, you, you, it's, it's haiku pen pals. Uh, with uh, you, you send it on a postcard. So if yeah. the haiku sucks, you still have the postcard, and maybe the postcard is awesome. Ooh, and what you could do is sign up, and it would be a computer-generated haiku, and then you just get mail. <laughs> but you wouldn't know what it would be. Sorry, I, I immediately took it to a bot place. That was not necessary. <laughs> well, I like the bot portion. So like, there's a there's a whole bot portion where you go like, it would be nice to surface haikus. Like if you come to the site and there's like, you know, hundreds or thousands of haikus people written, you're like, well, I, I don't know who's a good haikuist or not, or like topics or whatever. So there would be like a thing where like, you know, 
be nice if like you knew when your friends like posted one, you could read it and you could be like, that's a good one. And like, give it like a, uh, an egg roll. I don't know. Like, what would you give a haiku instead of a thumbs up? You would give it a. An egg roll? <laughs> Sorry. I'm hungry. And wrong, I'm thinking about what's in the freezer. That's the wrong, uh, I believe that's the wrong country. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just thinking about lunch. Um, <laughs> thumbs up. So, yeah, I guess, oh, I guess if I was going to follow that, like, I, I didn't want to give it like a, what do you, a like, that's what it's called, a like. I didn't want to give it like a like or a, what is it on Twitter? Is it a like on Twitter? It's a heart. A heart. Okay. Yeah, a like or a heart sort of seem a little overdone. So something something more appropriate for haiku, which would be like well, if it was haiku a fish, seasonally it appropriate a tree. Fish. Oh yeah, that's true. I guess I could give it like a fish. Like fish food. It would be it would be fun to just have like arbitrary fish that have no meaning associated with them. So like you give it a trout or a carp or a salmon <laughs> or like, but what do they mean? I don't know, but I gave it a trout. <laughs> It'd be like, but it would be like linear. So it'd be just like guppy, trout, rainbow trout. Like, <laughs> like, but you could like look at a haiku. This one has nine rainbow trout and two guppies. And you look at another one and be like, this one has like seven manta rays and a shark. Like, but there's actually no association and meaning. It's still the same total or whatever of fish. But this I mean, is I so like, dumb. I like I don't... sharks and manta rays better. So I would probably gravitate towards that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, like the shark one, I'd be like, I'm not interested in that haiku. We were, when we were in Florida, we went to the beach and like Tyler and I were swimming out and I have this like, are we the furthest ones out? I'm like, well, okay, that makes us like bait. So Tyler, let's go back in six feet. So we're not the first one. Completely illogical. Obviously sharks don't, like there's no shark like with a protractor making sure they're perfectly parallel to this, like the shoreline, right? Like how dumb is it, right? Like this is like, anyway, that's, that was what was going through my mind uh, as we were out playing in the waves was like, there's a shark patrolling, but after a certain line, you're fair game. I don't know. Like sharks are like, nope, you're back at home base. You're okay. Sounds no. very relaxing. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. Like getting in the water and like being plowed by waves. That came out wrong. Uh, we had a comment recently on a YouTube uh, video. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, and yes, I, ma'am. when I went to look for it, to moderate it or whatever it was gone so i think it got deleted uh the comment w- came in at 12 seconds in episode 111101 hirameki uh to note 12 seconds into any of our videos is still the intro uh yeah and the 12 seconds uh time stamped comment was vaz.limo so i wanted to share that uh, with the world, since obviously this, it's not something that you can go to and see anymore. What uh, does that mean? What limousine in German? I, I, I I'm oh, guessing. Yeah. I'm guessing. Limo. <laughs> <laughs> what limousine? No, no, no. Vaz period limo. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think that that dot limo is oh. like a, a, a TLD, one of those stupid like newish TLDs. So it's probably like a link to some crappy site. Uh, but I just wanted to share that because that's the only feedback we've gotten in months. Um, when we get comments, we need to like celebrate them no matter what they are. And you too can be featured on the show by sending us an email or a tweet or a something commenting on a video, I guess is a thing. Get at us with a hike and a postcard if you if want, you whatever moves us, you. Uh, review our podcast on the things then uh we'll probably i don't know i guess find out maybe and then maybe read it probably yeah, hit us up on twitter we'll give you a high five but we won't give you a fry mooning gift because that doesn't exist any longer yeah the 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 cause of this podcast maybe not but somewhere in the archives oh wait we have that twitter thread link i bet we could find that gift i'm sure I it exists it's from I'm our sure, site. yeah yeah i'm sure it's it's still around let me back up. Uh, it just some it just doesn't it just doesn't it because there's an American television anymore. show <laughs> called Futurama. That's, that's pretty far back. Yeah, uh, on Futurama Fry at some point Moon's um, mom's robot company, uh, and for a while I would post that GIF at Chris on Twitter with some frequency. <laughs> that might be too often. <laughs> Oh, I, mean, I would I would agree, but it was like literally the only thing I posted him for quite a while. Like he yeah. would post something, and I would hit him with the fry mooning gift just 
but not like everything he tweeted just once in a while. And I don't yeah. know why I did. I mean, I guess I know why I did it because I thought it was funny and it <laughs> entertained me and I knew Chris wouldn't take it the wrong way. Although now that I say that, like, would I really be hanging out or chatting with someone who would take Fry Mooning the wrong way? Like, <laughs> I guess not. I don't know. And now, now, now we know that, so that, was, that all comes back to uh, Gary's secret bitterness about how, uh, how I onboarded him at her, at her <laughs> old job. Oh, no, before. there's no secret. In fact, let's go ahead and lay this out right here. My first day at, uh, at a previous agency I worked out with Chris, um, I came in and um, it was, uh, there was some dude like, not Chris, there was some dude that was like, our first meeting was like cursing at me about code quality. And I'm like, oh, this is intense pretty quick. Um, the neck, and then it was like, all right, you're, what was your, your lead senior? I don't know, whatever your yeah, title was. was lead, yeah, time. lead dev. Yeah, so you're gonna, be, you're gonna be working as lead dev. So the second day I was late for work because I took the kids to school. So I like at 8.59, I yanked the car into a uh, Starbucks parking lot and opened my laptop uh, and then waited for Chris to show up. And uh, and then like the first thing he said was like, all right, here's the site you're working on. Uh, try and get it set up locally. Here's a database and a config file uh, and look at the log file and fix everything that's, that's spitting out errors in the logs. All right, talk to you tomorrow. And that was it, like that was day two. I just and have I'm to like, say, though, that, that like that's more than I received for onboarding. So yeah. like I almost am like, you got directions. <laughs> oh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You got that was I stand. It was by direction that. because there was literally no like what what we have this new guy. What is he gonna work on? Like Chris is like, I, I I don't know, maybe he can fix bugs. Like literally every website on the internet is spitting crap out in their debug logs. So Chris was like, Take a look. I got nothing. Here's it's, like it's, some it's a way to get familiar with the code base by digging through shit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Stand by yep. that. Yeah. And nine days later, I was almost crying on the phone. And then. And survived. that's why Gary is mooning me. The and that, that is why when I think of Chris, I think of Fry's butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not really. the resemblance that my head bears to his butt. I mean, look at that. Now that you say it, no. <laughs> um no i i mean that was that was that was just the nature of the gig and uh i hold no animosity i do think it's hysterical though i hadn't really thought about it in quite a while until the other day and i was thinking about i was actually thinking about i have a friend that i work with at modern tribe and she is working right now on trying to define like hey if you're hiring for a junior role like what are reasonable expectations for a junior role because there's like this huge delta of like oh i finished a boot camp or i learned how to code but i'm not ready for a job like that's the feeling for a lot of people, right? So like what's in that spot? And it would be really good if people could ask that question and be like, well, hey, here's an answer. Like either, no, you're really fine. Like it's 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 gonna be tough because like you just don't have the experience, but you're gonna get it. Or like, oh no, you're close, but here's maybe two or three things you should check off. Uh, right. And that, I feel like that it's not easy to answer right now for, for a lot of folks. Um, anyway, she's working on that. And so I was thinking about like where, like I was thinking about onboarding that I had had in the past. Um, and uh, if it had ever been successful. Uh, I've never had a proper onboarding experience. Um, so, but I can tell you as, some, as someone who graduated from a boot camp and like did all that, I feel like yeah. I did so many interviews for people with junior devs like six years ago that had no idea how to deal with a junior developer. Like they were just like, yes. oh, we want a junior developer because we don't have to pay you as much, but all the things that our senior devs are doing and without any guidance or mentorship. And I was just like, oh no, no, that's not where I'm at. Like you gotta- Totally, like totally. I was a very noisy junior dev. Like I was, I was, I was bothersome. Chris will agree with that. Like, like, hey, I you can get four bothered. dozen messages. Okay, yeah, you felt, bothered. you seemed bothered. You seemed bothered. <laughs> I was probably- I, I'm kidding, I don't remember if you seemed bothered or not. I, yeah, I- Because I, 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 I didn't I, care. I doubt, I doubt that I actually uh, said, see you tomorrow. I probably said, let me know if you have questions. I'm sure that's what it was. I, in tomorrow. fact, I'm sure it wasn't nearly as bad in, in reality as what I, I remember it. I just remember like getting off that phone call and like sitting there. It was like in a movie, like where the, like the camera zooms in really tight on the main character and everything else backs off. Like, and then the narration was like, you might wonder how I found myself here. Like, and that was it. And then like for the next like two days, like I was looking at code and it probably wasn't two days, probably like two hours. But like, I felt like it was like an it attorney like where I was days. like, I don't know. I don't have the slightest idea what I'm doing right now. Like none, like he's about to come back and ask how I'm doing and find out that I actually shouldn't have this job. Like that was the, the internal part for me was like, 
I'm not qualified or prepared or capable. Um, yeah, and I think and so. That was like that's up. that turmoil. I think yeah. you did follow up the next day or whatever, and he was like, I don't know where this stuff is. Like, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, look over here or do this thing over here. <laughs> <It's so light. laughs> I'm sure but that's in, what happened. But, it, like, but oh like, my the God, internal gonna... struggle was like, there were like people with swords in my brain. I do remember I was, like, talking you off the for cliff my a life. number of times. Yeah, and, it, and like, and honestly, like in Chris's mind, it was like an episode of, of The Simpsons or something. Like yeah. it, it was like, you know, and, and, I, and I think that's another part of this conversation about like. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.